Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're doing a slightly different uh, general update this time. Life in general, how's your father, how's your mother type shenanigans here. We are doing some box openings. And by box openings, we're talking pre-release kits. So if you were fortunate enough to pre-order from General Games, that's generalgames.com.au, or come in store, or give us a phone call, whatever it was, you were lucky enough to get yourself a Zendika pre-release kit. Now that is actually just this. However, because General Games is awesome, and when I say awesome, I mean the awesomest, this is what you actually get from us. That is two extra booster packs plus a set booster. Now, if you haven't touched one of the set boosters before, I'll kind of go through what to expect in this when we crack it open. That's one of the last things that we do. So when opening up Zendika packs, this is what we do. This is what we kind of expect. If you haven't played Sealed before, normally pre-release is the way this goes. These are the Japanese ones. So you can just rip them down the side. Um, you open up your six boosters plus your guaranteed foil rare slash mythic potentially uh, and then you build your 40 card deck including basic lands. You then battle people away for three um, uh, three rounds and you win packs based on those rounds. Uh, they are Japanese so they actually go to the um, uh, rares up the front. So uh, after you build that 40 card deck, you go battle around, play some games, you win packs based on if you win. You can have always, of course, intentionally draw and then share the packs. So here we have uh, Maul of Skyclaves, or the Skyclaves, and this battlefield attached target creature. Something you'll see pretty prominently in this set is this ability to attach the target creature as soon as the equipment enters. Equipment is definitely a huge theme in this set and very powerful. So if you're drafting as well, definitely look for equipments. I think they are very, very strong. First strike, flying, so that's what I'm saying. Imagine an aura, three mana aura that says target creature gets plus two, plus two flying and first strike. That's actually a really good aura. But here's the kicker. If the creature dies, then the equipment actually remains. Now the equip costs are normally pretty high. That's the downside, but it equips automatically. So you pretty much get an aura that sticks around. So we'll kind of go through, check out a couple of the uncommons. Commons are still floating around. We've got some rare uh, uncommons. Uh, we got some uh, negates, old schools, might have Marasa. Awesome, awesome card. Zulaport Duelist. That's a really, really good combat trick I've already seen. Um, Scale the Heights. Also really, really cool. So we'll go over a couple of these. We did get ourselves a gorgeous little uh, alternate art. So my uh, belly recovery. It's really, really good. It's, uh, it's um, what's it called? It, it's regrowth, but it's also a land if you need to be a land. These are something we'll also see pretty consistently. It's within this set, um, cards that are something and also a land if you so choose. Again, really, really, really powerful. That's what these cards are for. So if you look, that's an actual magic card on the back. Uh, if you don't have sleeves or don't want to use these cards because sometimes sleeves aren't entirely opaque, um, you can actually write it down on here. You just write down Bala of uh, Bala Ged Recovery. And then on the flip side, on the blue one here, you write Bala Ged Sanctuary. And then you just pretty much write down what the card does. So these are awesome little check cards that you can use in your deck. Actual magic cards. You can't tell what they are, but uh, you know you can use them instead. Let's see, have a mind carver, another really, really good equipment. When it enters the battlefield again, attach a target creature, something you're going to see really, really consistently with these equipment. So one mana, uh, quick creature gets plus one, plus oh. It's not too shabby. Gets plus three, plus one instead if there are eight or more cards in your opponent's graveyard, and you'll see a lot of incidental mill. It's now a keyword, puts cards from your library into your opponent's graveyard. Really, really strong. Again, one mana, you potentially gets plus three, plus one in the late game. So really, really, really cool cards. Vastwood Search, kick up. Search your library for two basic lands. Put them into play. Tapped if you kicker it, so that's eight mana. One of your creatures also gets plus two, plus two. Oh no, each creature you control. So that's how you break board stalls in limited cards. Absolutely bonk, because again, it's an eight mana card, but very, very, very strong. So look, we're going to go a bit faster going through here. We don't have all the time in the world for this unboxing. I'm just kind of going to give everyone there out there a bit of an understanding of what to expect. We've got your checklist card. You've got your um, your full art land as well, which are always absolutely gorgeous. Nimble Trap Finder. Can't be blocked uh, if you have another cleric. Uh, if you had another cleric, Rogue, Warrior, or Wizard enter the battlefield under your control this turn. So again, we're kind of focusing on this Dungeons & Dragons style thing, which is actually going to come in in one of the later sets. Uh, but in Dungeons & Dragons, you have all of these classes. These are kind of your core classes. Um, and this set is very much focused on this. Instead of allies, which was the previous kind of thing in Zendikar, we now have uh, parties. Um, which is to say, you know, you have to have one of each of these guys. So at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, that is to say, a cleric, a rogue, a warrior, and a wizard on the battlefield, uh, whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. That's actually very, very good. Uh, is it whenever, yeah, this creature. Um, 
creatures you control. So, you yeah, know, actually really, really good. Again, if you have a full party and you attack, absolutely brutal on that. You potentially draw four or five cards, give or take. A um, couple of uncommons here. Another, another good, good Basswood Surge here. Uh, Low Mage's Familiar. Again, that's your ramp at blue or, or green. Whatever you cast a kick spell, gain some life. Pretty basic stuff. And Saloon Division, really, really cute. It's an awkward dig through time. Three mana, look, uh, three mana instant, look at the six. But you have to get an instant or sorcery. It's not just kind of any card. It's only one. But on the flip side, it's actually a land again. Just so, so useful. Because if you know you need it early, you have it. Um, if you don't have it early, well, then it turns into something else a lot better. So what do we else got here? A Skyclave Squid, really, really cute. This card is actually really good again. Uh, it's just landfall. You can attack. Two mana, three, two. Really, really good blocker. If a land comes into play, um, even better than that. So really, really cool. So look, that's our first, that would have been our prize support if we did play, kind of just took out our packs. Um, but now we actually have the pre-release kit itself. So what do we got here? We're going to open up these packs. We have the guaranteed foil and ore and mythic on the front, but we also have our dice. We have a blue dice here with the Zendika symbol. Just going to pop that one up top. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous symbol. What is our rare earth going to be? It is Arch Priest of Ionia. It's a one mana X2. Uh, the X is power equal to the creatures in your party. So it's automatically a one mana one two. That's pretty good. The upside is if you get more parties, obviously it's bigger. The Binium Combat in your turn, if you have a full party, target creature gets plus one plus one and flying until end of turn. Look, one mana one two still very fine and very quickly and rapidly becomes a bigger X2, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, then you get your arena code as well. I'm not going to show that one to you too much, but there's a code on the other side of this. If you jump on MTG Arena, you can actually uh, put that in uh, and get six booster packs, which is actually really, really cool. So look, let's jump into some more packs here. Uh, what do we got? These ones aren't the Japanese ones. So we've got to rip them, rip them good like we used to. Uh, commons up the front on this one. No longer rares. We've got a bunch of commons. Anything cool in here? No, nah, nothing fancy. No cool, cool packs or anything like that. Um, we got the Veteran Adventurer. Um, it's this is, these are really, really strong. So these cards actually have uh, it's a, a cleric, rogue, warrior, and a wizard. So this is a whole a whole party in itself and costs less. So these cards are actually really, really good when you run in on that synergy. Skyclave Plunder. Uh, Skyclave Plunder. Look at the top X. X is the number of creatures in your party. Put some cards into your hand. Brushfire Elemental. Can't be blocked by creature power two or less. And a land four gets plus two, plus two. These are some awesome new cards as well that we've seen. This is actually a rare land. I can choose this to be a, a blue source. Or a red source. So kind of interesting little twist here. It is one or the other. Um, means that, you know, kind of like a shock land where you have to shock yourself to get one or the other. I, I choose, but there's no damage done to me. On the flip side, I can only have one or the other. It's either blue or red, not both when I need it to be. So really, really interesting. I think these lands are crazy powerful. Um, we'll definitely see some really cool stuff in that as well. So look, blasting through. Got a couple more here. Um... Definitely probably looking for blue-white. As you can see, my rares are blue here, plus white, plus a white here. So i actually probably be focusing on, funnily enough, um, uh, some adventuring parties. That's kind of what we're working on here. Uh, Synchronized Spellcraft, really, really good removal. Kills some creatures, plus potentially kills your opponent. Again, Scale the Heights, we've been through that one. Uh, Windrider Wizard, flying. You can cast instant sorceries if you, uh, or a wizard if you do loot. Really, really cool. I like that one. Uh, Marasa Root, Root Grazer, this is a really interesting late game card. It has Vigilance, so you can block or attack with it, but you can return basic lands or play basic lands. So if you have a bunch of landfall triggers, really, really, really strong. Uh, Zov Consumption, each opponent loses four life and you gain four for six mana. Alternatively, it's a land that comes into play tap. So again, you have the late game choice on that one, or potentially you, you just uh, play the play it as a six drop. Uh, we have Scoot Swarm. So these cards are really, really interesting. Already making waves in uh, in the Magic community. There's some really, really interesting things you can do. So Landfall, uh, make a 1-1. One, one. If you have six or more lands... Every time you play a land instead, you make an exact copy of Scute Mob. So it's a 1-1, one, one, but uh, it means the next time you play a land, you trigger it twice. And then again, and then again. If you use the Great Horn, a uh, Migratory Great Horn, the common from Akoria, you can mutate this. When you make a copy of it, it's a copy of the mutated copy. So it comes into play, search for a basic land, triggers, goes into your library, search for a basic land, triggers, oh, there go the commons, uh, triggers again and again and again. You pull all the basic lands out of your deck and make this huge scoot swarm, which is a really, really cool combo. A um, little bit awkward, but uh, very, very, very powerful. Again, um, nothing fancy here in the cool little thingos, but uncommons. We got you know, Sproutling, Kicker, uh, Return a Card to your Graveguard. Really, really cool. Skyclave, we went through that one. Exilus Fury, another one, Sacrifice a Creature to Fling. It's pretty much Fling, but it has a land on the flip side as well, which is really cool. Ooh, our first Mythic, Angel of Destiny. As we can see, definitely looking to go into white, I think, in this in this kind of build. Uh, flying Double Strike, so five mana, 
four six really. Whenever a creature you control does combat damage to a player, uh, you and that player gain that much life. At the beginning of your end step, if you have at least 15 more life than you started, uh, each player, Angel of Destiny, attack this turn, loses the game. So this is a really, really different card. It's about giving you, it's kind of life gaining yourself. You're not actually dealing damage to your opponent very well. If they remove this card, it's, it's very strange because you're just giving your opponent a bunch of life. But again, you can win the game by actually gaining life here. Uh, it's also whenever a creature you control. So like it gives all your creatures lifelink, which is really strange. But it's only lifelink for player damage. So really, really cool. Um, definitely a very unique card. I can see a lot of commander shenanigans happening around that. I can definitely see a very interesting standard deck being built around that. Uh, we also have Ruin Crab. Uh, this is just a better Hedron Crab. It literally is. It's, it's a one, one blue for an 0-3 and it mills three cards. Really, really strong. Really, really cool. Uh, Umara Mystic, whenever you cast an Isle Sorcery, it's plus two plus zero, very stereotypical. Blood Chief's Thirst, destroy target creature or planeswalker, really, really cheeky, good removal. Um, and then we have the Hagra Mauling here. Again, another really, really cheeky removal. It's four mana murder, um, uh, but it costs one list to cast if an opponent controls no basic land. So it's a four mana murder down to a three mana murder, which is kind of bad in a lot of senses. But on the flip side, it's also potentially a land, which is really, really huge. I love it when my murders become land because, you know, my opponents started to not play creatures or I have happened to have creatures on the battlefield instead. And I just get a land. So look, I'm um, smashing through this. We get Negate, a couple other shenanigans here. Oh, there is a gorgeous alt art Spitfire Lagak. Pretty cool card. Four mana, three, four. Uh, landfall, ping your opponent for one. Um, Nahiri's Binding is a very stereotypical removal in this. All right, haven't seen these ones. Acquisitions Expert. In his battlefield, target opponent reveals the number of cards from their hand equal to the number of creatures in your party, and you choose one and discard it. Uh, is it randomly? No. So your opponent chooses the cards that they reveal. So really, really interesting. Cyndaclasm, really, really cheeky removal. Um, it, it does one damage to everything. If you kick it, it does two, including your guys. So really, really interesting on that one. Baywind Veil, really interesting. Again, creatures your opponent control get minus two, minus zero for the turn or a land. So like just really, really powerful things. If, if these cards aren't beneficial to you, they just become lands, which is really, really cool. Um, Thieving Skydiver, really interesting card, really, really cute. They had to word this one very specifically. It's two mana kicker X, X can't be zero, and you steal uh, an artifact that your opponent controls. If it happens to be an equipment, you can immediately keep it, uh, equip it to Thieving Skydiver. The reason this can't be zero is for things like Vintage, where if you pay uh, two mana to make a two one and steal their mocks, very, very strong, very, very powerful. So it's interesting they had to make uh, X not zero. Ooh, we have a foil rare, which is really cool. Uh, Crag Plate Baloth, seven mana. I guess this is the new, um, uh, what is it? The new Dino Boy. Uh, can't be countered. Hexproof Haste. If it was kicked, it ends the battlefield with plus. Whoa, so this is a 10 mana 10 10? Can't be countered. Hexproof Haste. This is a really interesting card. That, that, that ends control matchups really fast. Doesn't have trample. Um, but the Hexproof Haste, definitely really, really strong. So that's a, that's a really cool card. Really, really interesting. All right. What else we got here? We got a couple more things to go through. Too many um, voices, reprint. That's really, really cool. Uh, Ravages Mace. Again, these equipment's really, really good. You'll see again, when it comes into the battlefield, equip it to target creature. Plus one, plus one for each party in each... Uh, uh, equip creature gets plus one, plus one for each creature in your party and has Menace. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, Lizard Form Blight. Draw a card. Each end land loses all ability types and becomes colorless. And pay one, pay one life to add one mana of any... Okay, interesting. Um, you can kind of stop your opponent doing shenanigans, or you can maybe color fix yourself in black, which is really, really strange. McKinney Stampede, again, such an awesome card. Like, it's five mana combat trick that ends the game if there's a stalemate. Alternatively, if you get it early, it's just a land. So these cards are really, really powerful. Um, Relic Robber, when it deals combat damage to a player, create that player creates an 01 colorless goblin construct cannot block and at the beginning of your upkeep this creature deals one damage to you that's really interesting i actually really like that card really really cute and of course we have the gorgeous land so look that's all the kind of uh booster packs that we had there i actually really like this rally robber i think that's a really really cool interesting card very very dangerous it's three mana haste as well so you pop that down on turn three and there's some really really cool stuff you can do but look let's jump into these set boosters so what have we got here so for starters we've got an art card which is absolutely gorgeous if you ever opened up modern horizons you notice they started doing art cards of all kind of the rares and stuff like that uh well in the same thing here this is uh 27 of 81 so there's 81 art cards in the set uh, hashtag collect them all uh gorgeous just gorgeous gorgeous artwork here absolutely love it um foil land or, or just a land slot in general um 
Uh, because we're in Zendikar, it's the full art lands. There'll be some kind of interesting land to do with each of the sets in this slot, if set boosters do continue. This one's foil, which is awesome. Then we have the next four cards. They're common, but they follow some kind of synergy together. So this one, as an example, uh, is actually all black. I've seen some with like all warriors or all clerics or a combination of both. So these happen to be all black cards. So if you were playing sealed, you'd have a better chance of kind of building up a deck, which is really cool. Um, won't go too far into the actual cards here. Um, then you've got kind of like your uncommons or other slots through here. So we've got uh, three uncommons. This next one, the Vanquish the Wheat slot, that can be can kind of anything. It's a really interesting slot. It can be some rares, it can be some foils. Uh, pretty, pretty cool. Um, then we get your rare for the deck. So we happen to get a Nissa of Shadow Bows, which is really, really cool. This is the new Nissa landfall. She gets loyalties. She makes some more lands and things like that. Her ultimate is whenever you put a creature with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of lands you control onto the battlefield, put two plus one plus one counters on it. No, you may put a creature with converted mana cost less than or equal to the lands from your hand or the battlefield. So really, really cool. Um, then you've got like a foil slot here. Then you have this slot here. This is uh, an art token, unfortunately, or, or just a token card for us, an advertisement. Um, but this can be part of the list. Now, the list uh, is a set of cards of about 150 that can be anything in the history of Magic, pretty much. Um, it's got things like, uh, what do we got? We got uh, Force of Negation in there and other strange cards like that. So, so really, really, really cool stuff like that. So that is a set booster. You have a potential, there's like a half percent chance of getting four rares in this uh, particular slot because uh, this can be a foil rare. You guaranteed your rare in this slots as well. You can potentially get rares. And then of course in your um, art cards or the, the, uh, the advertisement card slot, you can also get a rare. So potentially four rares in this, which is really, really cool. Now for those that have hung around this long, I have a little bit of a treat for you as well. We happen to have a box topper sealed product, not for resale here. This is available when you purchase uh, draft booster boxes or set booster boxes. Uh, if you're lucky enough to get a collector's box as well, you get two of these in the slot. Now these are um, uh, non-foil cards. Am I doing this the right way? We want to do it in that way. Um, so if you're lucky enough uh, to get the collector packs, you can get these uh, in a non-foil for two of those and the collector packs themselves come with foils. So these are always guaranteed not foil, but you can get a foil version in the um, uh, in the collector's packs. Now, before I go forward here, uh, I want comments below. What do you think this card's gonna be? Here's a couple examples of what we've got. Verdant Catacombs, Horizon Canopy, Valakut the Molten Pinnacle, Black Cleave Cliss, Razor Verge, Thicket. So these are gorgeous, gorgeous cards, as you can see. I'm here for a Misty because go big or go home, or maybe a Scald in Town. Haven't got a Manland yet though. So I'm still thinking this is gonna be a Celestial Colonnade for the Manland, but I want a Misty Rainforest. So pause the video, comment below. Three, two, one. Luxury Suite. Okay, so I was completely off the board game. That is one of the commander lands there. Absolutely gorgeous. There's our current collection. If there's some of these cards that you like and enjoy, hit up the uh, General Games Facebook store, General Games Melbourne or General Games Frankston, and we can sell these as well. Everything you see here is for sale, which is cool because we are actually a store. But you all enjoy your pre-releases at home. You all enjoy the wonderful cards that you can pull out. These such beautiful art throughout all of this. Like this, this foil mountain is just absolutely gorgeous. I love some of these, like the forest as well. This is some of the most gorgeous art I've really seen from Wizards just do some gorgeous Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff here. Um, but that's it from me for today. You have yourself a wonderful day. You enjoy your pre-release week, and we will be sending out all the boxes, set boxes, draft boxes, and collectors as soon as they are in stock. We will be shipping those all available for in-store collection. But you have yourself a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend. Much love coming from Max. We'll see you all next time. I'm going to send you over to Ali. She's going to tell you how you can check out all our different social medias, including Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Mwah. Stay safe. Hey guys, it's Ellie. If you like that video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more interesting content. You can also follow us on Facebook for more information and events. Likewise, follow us on Instagram for those behind the scenes photos and videos. See ya.